I, a conjecture of want, didn't know I'd need her eyes to see my sight until hers didn't open. Call it reflection if you want, but it's self-witness. In her, the mirror's immature, fused, closed. If the veil of her lids were buds, her eyes would have refracted a sense of girlhood because rainbows are light from the sun separated into colours. Shut, she never saw her image in mine either. If they who are us not observed in our look, this book is our gaze. She is present like petals that perennially pierce colour tucked into green and fall when bees take pollen away and crisp to dust before dirt before earth and which dry up in the home but stay as a memory that could become an awakening. It's the process happening at once, arriving and parting, planting and weeding any imperfection to protect the view of each moment and give a thing that needs some air a chance to bud. In the immediacy of her afterlife, relief. At least no life of oxygen tanks and I could sleep without guilt, I may wake to her ending. At last, no life of days hung up on intravenous poles, like question marks. No intruding strangers asking that I knew better and could advise as life giver against professions of life savers I had questioned the life out of and if they thought her alive. To pour into you without question, without invitation, without asking, then measure me in your skeleton, against your spine, notching the units of space you use to investigate where questions come from. I have filled your silence to the tongue. Even my lips leak at your containment of me. To pour into you, without asking, without question, without invitation, and fill your peace, entirely listening for your inquiries to spill and drink you inside out enough to drown you with infectious salivation. For you are everything I want for myself. To pour into me, accepting question, accepting asking, accepting invitation, you as I am, what is it in me that you want to reach? I can't see as I am, as I am in you, to become who you are. You are me to become me as you are. Though silver bullets cocked on curbs and graveled parks turn teenagers into wolves in cars, down back streets in the night, in cities, on summer afternoons, at day raves, on borrowed farmland, after afters at the dawn, and starve the brain mindless when they learn the mindful give and take of breathwork, puckered on rubber lungs, blown up with nos, cracked in cream canisters from those silver bullets. They close their eyes to concentrate. Breathe in eight beats and hold it. Blow slowly in the lung and back in again and hold it. Blow slowly out until your lungs are emptied and in eight beats and hold it. Blow slowly out and there it is. Forget to breathe and hold it slowly and they forget who they are 
and all that's left is corridors of breathing hexagons. They run through centres of mandalas and end up with two numbers or two figures or two members of each sex with multiple genders and two digits again of such satisfaction they stop inhaling as they feel they've just figured out what reality is. And peace sets in as if they have the answers for why we exist. And there it is when they empty their lungs of silver gas and air. There it is, the first breath before the first cry. Their heart flickers and they resist until it threatens to blow out as the oxygen fades. It's gone, it's gone, it's going. They know when they hear sounds stuttering back to, collect and deliver them back to the park, to the back street, to the farmland to the afters, and the answer dies once they inhale. Without the rubber lung, I'd mastered the give and take of breathwork for surges in gas masks, and the answers left me confusing. The two dates of birth and death, and forever remembering her birthday, the day she left.